on this episode of Video Voices. We're doing documentaries. And we've been working on our documentary since January. It gives us a chance to like explore something that we're actually interested in. It kind of gets us out there in the community talking to people and we kind of see things. Different sides of things. Voices, uh, to me, is about, as the name implies, uh, you know, using your voice and everyone has a voice and everyone has a personal opinion on something special to them. And that's what the documentary is all about. It's finding something that is special to you that maybe not everyone knows about and expressing it to the world. I've learned a lot um, about how to work with a group. You, know, you really have to incorporate all these different schedules and um, different opinions for sure. Um, and also going out into the world, and, you know, asking if you can do this and all this different stuff. Just, um, I don't know, I guess people skills in a way. <laughs> Getting to kind of meet a whole new group of people that I've never really met before and talk to them and film them and ask them questions and you kind of, it's just very interesting with something I hadn't really seen before. So new experiences is a valuable thing. Like, I feel like us as a group worked really well and like our PSA worked really well, but like I feel like we're having to learn a lot about like not being like, like having to rely on others, yeah. you know what I mean? Cause, like, I think a skill I got was people skill, I'm better at people skills now, like talking to strangers and like, I don't know, it's kind of weird and intimidating at first to like go into the back of a restaurant where you don't know anybody and be like, hey, I'm gonna film you now. It's just important to listen to other people, I think, and I mean, when you're at any job, you're always gonna have to do that. <laughs> I don't know, I think it will help for like, whenever I like need to make a video again, it will definitely help a lot and it will help um, I don't know, I think it'll just help in all, with all of my projects because it's really time consuming and it's just, I've learned a lot on how to use my time wisely. The most challenging part I think is taking the footage we have and figuring out how to use it, like, like doing the editing to figure out how to use the footage to, to like get our point across and make like a cohesive story though. Voices is a great class, I believe that, that we're asked to we're asked to make documentaries because we pick up a lot of skills like time management. Like Sinjin and I like got all like dressed up for our like winter formal at my house and then went and shot for like two hours before the dance. <laughs> I went with my hair in like curlers. Because we like needed to. But I Debbie, what are you doing on March 18th? Um I don't know. Why? Guess what? At Riverview Theater. There's a Wait, did you say Riverview Theater? Yes. Do you know about the Vo South High Voices documentary screening on March 18th at the Riverview Theater? Yes, I do. Are you going to be there? I am. Are you going to start? Uh, taping and filming the whole process of how to become a firefighter. Now pretty much they're a whole family and how they come together. Um, the whole training process might be longer than the actual video time allotted we have, so we're still working that part out. All I see is different color helmets. 
I don't see male, I don't see female, I don't see white, I don't see black, I don't see Native American, I see firefighters. turn the clock back. Yeah, you know, I wish I go and just keep on going. Just reload and yeah. start over and keep on going. I mean, it's, you know, this is a wonderful career. It really is. Um, my documentary is about a subgenre of music I feel passionately about. It's called progressive metal. It's a bit different than what you might hear on the radios. Um, I got to uh, I got to interview uh, the station manager of Jazz eighty eight, which is a very it's my favorite radio station in Minneapolis. They have great music and it's a great station. And she was a very interesting person. It had a lot of a lot of uh, points that I that I really liked and she had a lot of interesting things to say. Progressive metal, what does it mean to you? It takes music to the next level. How so? Progressively. <laughs> the term metal is often, uh, you know, people think like fast riffs and stuff and, uh, you know, screaming too. Well, you know, progressive metal sort of breaks away from that. <laughs> Uh, pretty much have no limitations when it comes to genres. I'm influenced by a lot of drummers from many different styles of music. A lot of jazz drumming, acoustic, guitar, R&B. We use all of our wide ranges of musical influences and encompass them all into this one little package we like to call progressive metal. Uh, those guys have just always known what they're doing down there, you know. The, the sight lines and everything, it's just, which has always been set up well there. I think, you know, through the years, it's kind of gotten that hypnosis factor to it. I mean, it's almost like this store, you know, it's kind of with the name and everything. It's got that hypnosis factor to it. It's got a unique name and stuff. And First Avenue's just always, you know, just had that ambience and that kind of thing about it that is like, yeah, everybody wants to go check it out, you know, just to go there. You know, you could see a band like Tool, you could go to see them in the 7th Street entry and maybe there was 25, 30 people in there. And all of a sudden they get popular and they're in the main room and it's so packed you don't want to even be there. It's still a great venue and, and uh, it'll always be one of my favorite spots, you know. Our documentary is about me and the 11 year old boy I work for. I'm a personal care assistant and it's pretty much just the um, watching him through the eyes of a PCA. The coolest part of our documentary was working with Anders because he's just such a cool little kid and he's so much fun. Um, it was also fun to see how Kinsey worked with him as a PCA. Ready?
And I got trained in in January here at MTN of Final Cut Pro, and uh, I thought it was pretty exciting. I learned how to use Final Cut Pro and just like pre-plan an entire project and um, just like editing everything and filming and all of like the little techniques that come with it. So this is the process of the waiting game, I like to call it. Um, I'm importing all my video I've shot with my with my mem group members, and now I'm just waiting. It can take up to an hour, maybe even more. We spent about 10 to 15 hours filming edited for about roughly 15 to 20 hours. Nine, two, 10 hours filming? Yeah. 10 probably. hours filming and probably like 20 hours editing? 15 to 20, 15 probably to closer to 20. 20. I think about what I'm going to do next and how I'm going to sort out my video. And I play games and text friends. Yeah. It's hard to do a documentary. It takes a lot of work and planning and a lot of time. A lot of time, and you get to go out there and you, you learn on your own by doing things kind of hands on. Our documentary is about a small business in St. Paul called Columbus Pizzeria and Carter and I work there and so um, we're just kind of like capturing the vibe of that restaurant and talking about what it takes for like small businesses to succeed and how they kind of depend on each other. Hubby Smith will do all he can to keep Rashad Vaughn in his vacuum. And I hit sky the limit for him in terms of his recruitment becoming dramatic. So
my project is about Occupy Minnesota, and we have interviewed and got the chance to meet uh, Brother Ali, who is a famous is a famous uh, hip hop artist, and that was just a really cool experience. Today we're at the state capitol watching Brother Ali perform and speak about equality and a time for change. Um, when I found out about it, obviously you know Occupy Wall Street happened and little movements started spreading up in cities around the country and there was one in downtown Minneapolis. I went there and I thought the idea was really cool but I, was, I wasn't quite sure how to interact or how to engage that um, when it was just people meeting downtown. But that ended up turning into um, or growing into Come and be in refined and occupy homes where the people from Occupy were going to homeowners that were being foreclosed um, unjustly and um, you know started fighting back for them to keep their houses. We don't really like to talk about the race day. That whole grandparents used to own slaves day. Pat ourselves on the back in February, looking at pictures of Abe Lincoln and the great king. But the field pictures much more embarrassing. We're still not even close to really sharing. To, to push back against the banks, push back against the authorities, and then if things get really bad and they come to evict the family, then we protect the house. And so we say, if you want to evict this family from their home, you have to arrest all of us. The situation of oppressed people shows what we feel it means to be a human being. Uh, what does it mean to be a man or king? I think the struggle should be free as I'm inheriting. Uh, and if we say it how it really is, we know this living skin still gives us Ava, Molly, and I are doing our documentary on, um, it's called The Life Size Book Project in Northeast Minneapolis, which is like, it's put on by this organization called ArtShare that's kind of a community art project to like, its purpose is sort of just to bring the community together and make something concrete and like for fun, I guess, too. And um, I would say the m most interesting part for me so far is just like, getting to go and like on site shooting at like an event kind of that's like it was really fun and like figuring out like what kinds of shots are like good for your video and stuff like that I've been living in Northeast for about 12 years. Northeast Minneapolis is, is sort of in a historical transition period. It's kind of changing from one place to another and the story that I think this project will tell is sort of where we are now. You would call me the artistic director of Art Chair. All right, and what is it? Art Chair is a community um, art group, and our mission is to create shared art experiences for the Northeast community. Mm -hmm. I love that. What's your name? Elizabeth. Elizabeth? And how old are you? Six. Do you like doing art? Our documentary is about Metropolitan Ballet Company. Um, their production of Swan Lake. Yeah, so they're like, it's like a company and school, so like students from the school are in these like productions with like professional act or professional ballerinas. Well, like, it's interesting to like just see how motivated like even the younger girls are. Like they're really focused like for their age. I mean, I understood that ballerinas were like super intense, but they're just, they're there like three hours after school and then for like six hours on Saturdays and Sundays. So it's kind of insane how much they put into it. I'll tell you what's cool, Eric's purple tights. <laughs> Those You'll see are, them in the documentary. They are pretty sweet.
any connection to Swan Lake. There are the things that happen in our lives, but most of what we experience in our mortal lives is what is imagined and what we think of, what's going on in our minds. So that's where I think it's interesting. I think it really plays to the human experience in, a, in an honest way, even though the ballet is over 100 years old. You're in very different settings and lots of different costumes representing different characters and uh, that adds some real flair to it. The atmosphere in the studio as we approach the production intensifies and everybody tries harder. They work harder in class. Is your Voices kind of helps you look at everything differently and try and see more sides than just one side and then that's a skill that can be transferred to like every part of your life kind of. I mean you're always going to need to figure out how, to, how someone else sees something or how it's the best way to try and go about something and it helps problem solving. So I'll be use that. Here was just yeah. being able to use media as a way to like convey a thought or emotion or just like a social problem that you want to, yeah, express. VOICES stands for Values, Options, Issues, and Choices Explored in Society. And so what we have learned in this class and what it's all about is asking questions. And our society has so many questions to be answered, but not so many askers. And that's what we're learning how to do is to get to the core of of the unknowns in our society, and that's something that's really important for everyone to do. Come to March, no, what, what day is it on? Come to the Riverview on March 18th. Lots of laughs. There's gonna be a wide selection of student-made movies, fun, you're gonna have a great time. And it's at 4.30. We like to take into account your busy schedules. Come and that's Riverview. why we scheduled it right when you're working. <laughs> Come to Riverview on March 18th. It's a, uh, the, keep messing up. Famous, Famous people. people. <laughs> Famous people at Riverview on March 18th. Come, be there. Come to the Riverview! March 18th! <laughs> At 4.30. It's free! It's free! Video Voices is a collaboration between South High and Minneapolis Television Network. I guess you say what can make me feel this way, my girl, my girl, <laughs> talking about my girl, my girl.